This is a Uari National Forest. With over 50,000 acres located in the center of North Carolina, it hosts a variety of outdoor activities, including mountain biking, hiking, horseback riding, camping, water sports, and off-road and ATV trails. As you can imagine, European vehicles, especially our cheap Facebook Touareg, stand out in the wide variety of Jeeps and other off-road vehicles, but mostly just Jeeps and more Jeeps. Jeeps. So we came out here and we're gonna find out how well our Touareg is gonna do against all of the other vehicles out here. Okay, so our Touareg is a stock Touareg, no modifications whatsoever, and we're gonna see how it fares off-road. The only thing we have is tires, essentially, uh, against all of these vehicles, Touareg, Cayenne, Cayenne, Touareg, and Atlas, to, with varying modifications. As most of you know, we bought our Touareg for 1,200 bucks, fixed it, did a bunch of work to it to get it back running, and now we are ready to off-road it. So we're gonna see how it does against all these vehicles behind me, and we'll see. This is a three liter TDI Touareg 2. Uh, this car is lifted on Eurowise lift blocks. He has the custom Eurowise roof rack. Uh, Toyo Open Country all-terrain tires, 1552 wheels, and he has rock sliders from Eurowise and skid plates from Eurowise as well. So he's gonna be more protected than we are for sure uh, in terms of damage. He also has a custom rear mounted spare that um, the guys at Eurowise made for him as well, which looks pretty awesome. Okay, so this is Mike's Cayenne facelift car. Uh, so I'm gonna let him go through everything they've done to this because they've done a ton of stuff to this to make it more capable off-road. It's probably the most capable vehicle. Yes, it's definitely the most <laughs> capable vehicle here. We've made 99% of the products on this car minus the tires and wheels. We make lift kits, rock sliders, underbody protection, roof racks, uh, just about anything you can think of for the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Cayenne and Touareg. On my particular car, we have a two inch subframe drop, a two and a half inch suspension lift, a tubular front roll bar with a built-in winch. And then we have basically all the underbody protection, including the gas tank, rear diff, front diff and front skid. And the reason why they drop, they do the subframe drop is because the body lift messes up your axle driveline angles. So they do the subframe drop to compensate for that. So you don't mess up your axles. So the other thing that Mike has done is these upper control arms, which allow you to adjust the camber to compensate for lifting the car. Because when you lift a car, the, the wheels will camber out on the top, which is a positive camber. So it will pull them back in to allow everything to be straight. So uh, that's, that's really so that you can keep correct camber on your car. Ah. Hold straight, hold straight. Hold straight, hold straight. Hold straight. Yep, yep, yep. This is a Cayenne 1. Uh, he's 100% stock just like us. He's got kind of bigger wheels and, and a little bit less rubber, but he does have mud terrain tires on there. He's, this is probably our closest person in terms of how capable his vehicle is versus ours. This is Jack's Touareg 2. Jack actually works at our shop. You may have seen him if you watch any of our Instagram stories or anything like that. He has a three liter TDI and is has just about everything that Mike has, Mike's made for these uh, in terms of skid plates, lifted and all that stuff. So he's gonna be very similar to the other gentleman over there with the, with the rear mounted tire. <laughs> nice and slow. Oh God. There you go. There you go. Push over. <laughs> and this is an Atlas. This is a uh, VR6 Atlas. If you're not familiar, Atlases are usually either a two liter four cylinders or the 3.6 VR6. This car has a lift, a uh, forged lift, and then also has just tires. So the interesting thing about this car is gonna be how it performs because it is a Haldex all wheel drive system, which means it doesn't have full time four wheel drive like the rest of the vehicles here. And so this is the car really to see how it does to determine how good or bad Haldex is on these cars. Oh.
one thing we need to do before we actually get started is air out. So what you wanna do is drop your tire pressures to roughly around 20 PSI or so, and that gives your tire the ability to kind of spread out to give you a contact patch during this stuff and the best traction you can, which then you have to obviously air up afterwards. I have never been off-roading, uh, not definitely not like this. I, I guess most people consider off-roading down, going down like a gravel path. Um, we're not lifted. Most of the people we are with are lifted. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Probably looks a lot less impressive on camera. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. We are here with people who are fairly experienced with this stuff or at least re moderately experienced if you were going to go off-road in your car i'd recommend doing it with people who know what they're doing also we have a spotter who's experienced who's helping kind of guide us the whole way and without that you probably are going to bang this shit out of your car <laughs> fun fact if you're doing this i wouldn't just go up and send it down some random mountain uh without some help Because why not? Why not do silly stuff? You won't do silly stuff. No, no this thing can't do that. Well, <laughs> maybe it could, but I'm not gonna find out. <laughs> this is the Dutch John climb. This is the difficult part. You ready for this? It's gonna be fun. It's like a 30 degree incline. It's pretty steep, it's very rocky. You gotta be locked in. And it's gonna be a fun one, it's very narrow too. Any sliding left to right, you will hit wall. Keep your way. momentum. If you lose yeah. momentum, you're probably yeah. going to stuck on a rock and you're going to lose and go back. Yeah. All right. Cool. Full yeah. send. Yeah. Well, go Don't full send it, <laughs> but definitely keep momentum going. You scared? I'm not scared, uh, but I am I am aware that there's a chance that we smash this, <laughs> this car. <laughs> hey, man. It was a $1,000 Facebook. It was a $1,200 car. Uh, I'm trying not to smash it up, though, because I'd like to be able to use it for other things. <laughs> If a tour egg off roads in the woods and nobody's around to hear it. Will it get stuck? <laughs> <laughs> Will it explode a transfer case? <laughs> Who knows? We already replaced one transfer case. So the one thing I will say about this event that if you were to do this on your own and you were to go to a place, I would make sure you know which places you should and shouldn't go to depending on what modifications are done to your car. We were fortunate to be going with people who are very experienced at this particular place and with off-roading in general, that you they were able to give us insight as to places that we should avoid with this vehicle, you know, given the, the your risk tolerance of what you're okay with. Um, you know, cars that don't have all the skid plates and all that other stuff, you should certainly be taking less risks uh, because you might have to have your car dragged out of there if you mess it up. So make sure you have a map, make sure you ask people for advice if you're not uh, experienced. The Land Rover guy that you saw in a lot of our clips actually was a guy who we met at, at our an outpost right before we went on the trails and he was just coming on his own and we said, hey, come tag along with us, you know, whatever. So that's something that finding a group like that, if they're cool with you tagging along, or, uh, or making sure you get educated as to what you should be looking out for is super important. Do you want to go down, I'm, Dickie? I'm really not going back up. I was just playing around. I mean, I'll get you back up. No. If you no, want to do it, I'll do it. Is it hard? It's it's a hard section. There's three Ds in this trail. There's Dickie, Daniel, and Dutch. Yeah. Those three trails are the hardest ones in this whole place. And we're going to do the second one right now. Oh, he's going to come down the middle. Finger. Come back or pass it. Oh, oh, hey, hey, come on. Nope. Oh, Easy does it. There you go. Nice and gentle. Now you're good. Just keep it slow the whole way, okay? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Come on. All right. Hold straight
Hold sharp. Three wheel, but I got you. Come on. All right, left side. All the way past me. Sorry, past her. Past her. Come on, go. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. All the way past me. Hold what you got. Let me get. Nice and slow. Hey. Hey. Give me a little more driver. Here we go. Drop in. Here we go. Come on. Oh. Go. 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 Where do you want? Oh. Hey, hey, listen to me. Finger, left. Hey, here we go. Pass. I'm left. Come on, that's what I'm saying. All right, hey. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> At least he, he is lifted. He's lifted higher. No, he's not. He's got through his drop in 35. While Jack was sending his Torag uh, up one of these hills, he had a little situation, which we, if we take a look down here, in this right area, <laughs> he, he had a rock commandeer his fog light position. So this is what it looks like, and this is what it should look like. <laughs> so that's what it should look like. And here's what it actually looks like. Oh my like. gosh. So these are the risks that you take whenever you do these things is, uh, you can take on some damage. Wow, that's a lot of damage. No, that's a lot of damage. Different vehicles here all have different sets of uh, four wheel drive setup. So our Touareg has a center locking differential. Most of the Touaregs, all the Touaregs come standard with that. Some rare Touaregs do have rear locking differentials. So every car here is a little bit different. Uh, pretty much all of them have center locking diffs. And the only one with a rear locking diff is the Land Rover. What that means is that if you're rear wheels are spinning the rears are locked together which would allow it to split 50 50 power left and right and not have one wheel start spinning and then the other one lose traction which is really what happens normally so that's why you really ideally want to have center and rear locking diffs and if you can potentially front locking diffs if you're doing real off-road stuff that pvc is uh, really loud I know. It's probably squealing worse now. Because someone, me, uh, decided I was, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a PCV valve for this thing, so I just used an aftermarket one, and it's a piece of shit that squeals. Cut to the clip of it squealing now. F-150. Yeah, one wheel drive. <laughs> 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 from my very limited experience with off-road stuff is that the community of people who are out here uh, are all pretty cool and like everybody kind of helps each other is cordial with letting people buy and trying to figure out ways to help people buy and you know whatever so um, it's a little bit different than some of the car community stuff <laughs> <laughs> that 
PCV. Bro, that PCV valve is so loud. Straight out, right there, right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bump over. There you go. Hey, there you go. Good. All right, turn back. Woo. Come on. Come on. Jeez, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I really wonder what this footage is gonna be like. It's gonna be like the fucking Blair Witch Project where it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest difference of what we saw with this stuff was mostly about not, because we all have the same drivetrain, was not really about getting stuck. It was really about concern around specific areas. So the area that they went to that Jack took on a little bit of damage and Mike potentially almost flipped his, his, his truck over, this thing couldn't go because it didn't have the ground clearance and the lift. But on top of that, it also doesn't have all the underbody stuff. So they can go, let's say, 10 miles an hour, five miles an hour over something that I'm basically gonna crawl over because the whole bottom of this thing is gonna be gonna be touching and potentially bang into stuff while we're driving. So uh, for that reason, we ended up um, hanging back during that one part, but also they just send it through everything much faster. So we fell behind at a few points. So at the end of the day, how did our Torag stack up against all the rest? Well, I would say it did just fine. The main key is not about it getting stuck. The only variable you're gonna have with off-road stuff is the locking and non-locking diffs. Otherwise, it really just boils down to how high the vehicle is in height and clearance and what protection you have underneath of it to prevent you from destroying your vehicle. Our Torag came out of this unscathed with no damage other than a few bumps and scrapes underneath the vehicle. We'll probably come back at some point in the future. By then, we will likely have added some modifications to help protect our car and don't damage it. We didn't get stuck and we didn't have to get towed out of the woods because we destroyed the car, which I would consider a pretty good accomplishment. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.